Hello, everyone. Welcome to Xinhua Live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. This is me, Yingting. I'm now standing in Quanzhou, Southeast Fujian Province. Quanzhou has won the UNESCO World Cultural Heritage status on July 25th this year. Right behind me is the Qingjing Mosque, locating two main streets in Quanzhou, and it's one of the 22 sites of the serial property. Now let's take a look. UNESCO accepted Quanzhou Emporium of the World in Songyuan, China, as a cultural property on this World Heritage List at the 44th session of the World Heritage Committee held in Fuzhou, capital of East China's Fujian Province. Located on narrow plains along the coastline of Fujian, Quanzhou was one of the world's largest ports along the historic Maritime Silk Road. Particularly in nation China's Song Dynasty and Yuan Dynasty, the serial property includes 22 sites of administrative buildings and structures, religious buildings and statues. The property witnessed multicultural communities, cultural memorial sites and monuments, the production of ceramics and iron and a transportation network formed of bridges, docks and pagodas that guided voyagers. It reflects greatly the special structure that combined production, transportation and marketing. It demonstrates the key institutional, social, land, cultural factors that contributed to the spectacular rise and prosperity of Quanzhou as maritime hub of the East and Southeast Asia trade network during the 10th to 14th century AD, according to a report by the International Council on Monuments and Sites, the committee's official advisory body. Qingjing Mosque is a representative component that reflects the multicultural communities of the city as a world maritime trade emporium. Now let's take a look inside. The building here was built in 2007 and is open to the public in 2009. Qingjing Mosque and the Islamic tombs are testaments to the culture, religion and lifestyles of foreign peoples that were active in Quanzhou during that time. They also serve as evidence that help us better understand the population accumulation, trade and diverse cultural history of this city in Song and Yuan eras. The Qingjing Mosque was founded in 1009, making it the first Islamic mosque ever constructed in Quanzhou. The location chosen for its construction was originally just outside the city gates of 11th century Quanzhou, its northern side abutting on the city's moat. In the Song Yuan era, this was Quanzhou's main residential community for foreigners. In 1310, under the direction of the Muslim people, major repairs were undertaken on the mosque. And it was at that point that the site's current layout really started to take shape. The design of the mosque employs Islamic architectural styles and the remaining structures include the gate tower, prayer hall, Mingshan hall, an ancient well and several inscribed steles connected to the history of the mosque. Although it's, quite, it's very quiet right now, but every Friday the Qingjing Mosque welcomes hundreds of Muslims attending prayers. Among them are dozens of foreign visitors. A few blocks away, 
are scattered several different places of worship, including a Confucian temple and the Kaiyuan temple, a Buddhist temple dating back to 685, built during the Tang Dynasty. The mixture of temples and mosques is an indication of the city's long and rich history. It also showcases the city's inclusive nature. The mosque has always been important to Chinese Muslims. Each year, it receives many visitors from other provinces and regions with large Muslim populations. Many of them come to Quanzhou not just to pray, but to visit the Islamic cemetery, where two Islamic saints from the seventh century are said to be buried. The city's Muslim tradition can be traced back to the Song and Yuan dynasties, when over 100,000 Arab and Persian merchants converged on the metropolis, bringing with them commodities such as spices and their religious beliefs via the maritime Silk Road. As we can see, the construction style of the Qingjing Mosque can be very unique and very ancient. Which reflects the multicultural and various religions living here. The city's Muslim tradition can be traced back to the Song and Yuan dynasties, when over 100,000 Arab and Persian merchants converged on the metropolis. Trenjo Maritime Museum has the largest collection of Islamic and Hindu gravestones, capstones, and inscriptions in the country. The interaction of religious cultures were frequent in Quanzhou. Some religious art has Chinese characteristics. There are two very unique stones feature auspicious clouds, a traditional Chinese symbol, at the gate of Qingjing Mosque. Back in Yuan Dynasty, the word for the Chinese translation of Buddha was commonly used by local people to describe their own particular god. The fact that these religions coexisted in harmony in Quanzhou was indispensable to interaction and integration. The decoration of the building, as we can see inside, are quite easy. Quanzhou was the fulcrum of East and Southeast Asia, that functioned as an engine for the trade across the vast expanses of maritime Asia during the 10th to 14th centuries. It was as well a window for the exchanges and interactions of Songyuan China and the outside world. Songyuan Quanzhou was functioning centered and powered by the city located at the junction of the river and sea, whilst with oceans at the southeast that connected it with the world, with mountains at the far northwest that provided for production, and with a waterland transportation network. I join them together. Those two stones can be traced back to Song and Yuan dynasties, and even Tang dynasty.
Song Yuan Chuanzhou presented a prosperous picture and a symbolic relationship among ports, city, and hinterland. The 22 component sites conveying the key attributes of the serial property of Chuanzhou include sites of administrative buildings and structures, religious buildings and statues that witness multicultural communities, cultural memorial sites and monuments, production sites of ceramics and iron, as well as a transportation network formed by bridges, docks and pagodas that guided the voyages. These component sites and their settings comprehensively reflect the distinguishing maritime trade structure and the multicultural social structure of Songyuan Chuanzhou. The serial property witness the extraordinary prosperity of Songyuan Chuanzhou as a world emporium that facilitated the Asian maritime trade. As one of the earliest areas where Islam was brought into China, Chuanzhou has well preserved a complete Muslim set puncher and numerous tombstones of the Song and Yuan dynasties, most of which are collected in Chuanzhou Maritime Museum. These tombstones, engraved with the name, birth, death, origin, and other information of the deceased are invaluable evidence for the exploration of the exchange between Chuanzhou and the Arab world in history. Historically, the restoration of Qingjing Mosque was led by local government officials and was widely participated in by Imam and Muslims. Since 1948, 49, the government has strengthened the conservation of Qingjing Mosque by restoring the mosque with materials and processes used in the original ones, in line with the principle of repairing old as old. Up to now, those Muslim descendants who live around Qingjing Mosque still retain their festivals such as Aid all fit, the Corbin Festival, and Mawild. Maintaining traditional Muslim customs, those who had moved away from Qingjing Mosque retained the collective and historical memory of Islamic culture in the process of localization. The most fascinating aspects of the city of Quanzhou was her openness and inclusiveness towards different ethnic cultures from around the world. The city hosted people from diverse cultural backgrounds and different beliefs interacted and intermingled with one another one here. As a major landmark of the commercial district of Songyuan Quanzhou, Qingjing Mosque not only bears witness to the cultural, religious and residential traditions of foreign ethnic groups in Quanzhou, but also stands testament to the demographics, trade and diverse cultural history of Songyuan Quanzhou. Even today, the mosque draws a constant stream of Muslim pilgrims from around the world, renewing the cultural exchanges and friendship with China between China and Arabic countries. The serial property demonstrates a highly integrated special structure that combines production, transportation and marketing in one place and a morphology shaped by diverse and cosmopolitan cultures. After a tour of the Qingjing Mosque, our next destination is Tianhou, Tianhou Gong and Deji Gate. Let's take a look. Here I am standing in a Deji Gate. As part of the serial property, the site of Deji Gate is a representative component testifying to the institutional guarantee of Quanzhou as a maritime trade emporium of the world in the Song and Yuan dynasties. Deji Gate 
was the south city gate of Quanzhou in the Song Yuan period. It is located at the southern extreme of the old city of Quanzhou, outside Tianhou Temple, facing Jinjiang River and the site of Shunji Bridge in the vicinity. Deji Gate and the Yicheng, known as the Wing Wall, to which it was connected, were first built in 1230. By that time, the Tianhou Temple and Shunji Bridge had already been completed. It became the main route by which people gained access to the commercial district on the south side of the city. The gate was expanded in 1352. In the Ming Dynasty, a Barbican was added, and in the Qing Dynasty, the gate underwent repairs and reinforcements. Up until the middle of the 20th century, the gate remained in regular use, giving it a history of over 700 years. Archaeological excavation in 2001 fully reviewed the remains of the various phases of construction on the site from the 13th century. Starting on the northern side of the site and proceeding southward, there are the southern Song city wall, the inner moat and the ancient arc bridge, the Yuan and Ming city wall and gate, the Ming Barbican and the outer moat. The overall layout of the city clearly shows a trend of southward expansion. As a major landmark within the commercial district on the south side of the city, the site of Doji Gate stands testament to the government's administrative assurance for the development of maritime trade and commerce within the city. Facing southward, the site covers an area of 2,000 square meters. Built of granite slabs and with old abandoned architectural elements, it is partly reinforced using lime grouting. Over 700 years ago, Italian explorer and merchant Marco Polo departed ancient China through the Maritime Silk Road. After he introduced exquisite Chinese porcelain, silk and tea to Europe, the world turned their interest to the prosperous marine city he departed from, Quanzhou, and the glamorous eastern country of China. On July 25th this year, a total of 22 sites in Quanzhou, China's World Ocean Trade Center in Song Dynasty and Yuan Dynasty, and the only starting point of the Maritime Silk Road recognized by UNESCO, were together listed as a World Heritage Site at the 44th session of the World Heritage Committee held in Fuzhou, East China's Fujian Province. China now boasts 56 UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Quanzhou, also known as Daitun, is located in the south of Fujian Province. One of the first Chinese trade ports to open to the outside world. It became an immensely prosperous center of trade from the 10th to 14th century. Quanzhou has a long history. Its economic development can be traced back to the Zhou and Qing dynasties. Later, it became one of the four major ports of the Tang dynasty and eventually became the largest foreign trade port in China around the end of the Song dynasty and the beginning of the Yuan dynasty. As you can see, it is Ming dynasty city walls and Wencheng. The Ming dynasty city walls were built from 1368 to 1398 on the basis of the Yuan dynasty city walls. The existing remains include the walls, the foundation of a gate tower, the gateway and Wencheng. A section of Qing Dynasty city walls added to Ming Dynasty Wencheng for consolidation is still preserved inside its west walls. The Ming Dynasty city walls lie at the south side of the Song Dynasty walls and moat extending from east to west. The under-earth the under section is 43.1 meters in length. Their exterior were built with stone slabs crosses across a range layer by layer, 
while their inner part filled with rammed earth and gravels. The gateway is narrow in its south end and wider in its north end, shaped like a Chinese character, too, and paved with five stone slabs running across the inner moat. The remains of the gate tower foundation are preserved on either side of the gate gateways at the north end of the site. Wen Cheng, the outer enclosure located at the south side of the city walls, is a half-moon layout structure with 22.4 meters in length from east to west, 22.4 meters in width from north to south. The gate and gateway of Wen Cheng is set slightly north of its west wall, with 2.28 to 3.08 meters in width. During the middle of the Yuan Dynasty, the Quanzhou port was only rivaled by Egypt's Alexandra port in size. Quanzhou was listed as a world heritage site for its glamorous history, lavish products, unique geographical advantages, effective management system, and diverse religious cultures, which can be seen reflected in the history of its listed 22 world heritage sites. The city with a deep-rooted centuries-old culture boasts five world-class intangible cultural heritages, including Nanyin music, rituals and related practices for maintaining the sustainable connection between man and the ocean, and the Quanzhou Marionette Show, making it a one-of-a-kind city in China as it spans all three major categories for the UNESCO list. Quanzhou's Islamic term Statue of Mani, Kaiyuan Temple, Statue of Lao Tzu and Confucius Temple, and schools show how Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, and Confucianism all made the southeast coastal city their home. Meanwhile, written works, including the travels of Marco Polo, also record the city's multicultural social groups, including government officials, royalty, and Chinese and overseas merchants. The cosmopolitan nature of the city had a great influence on both Chinese and world history. This is the moat. The moat was first built in 1230 as the outer moat along the southern side defending the Song Dynasty city walls. In 1352, the city walls were extended south of the moat, which thereafter functioned as the inner moat, with its side and bottom surfaces renovated and adjusted. The unearthed section of the moat is 47.2 meters long, 1.93 to 2.88 meters wide, and 2.5 to 2.75 meters deep. Its side surfaces were built with stone slabs crisscross arranged layer by layer. And here is the Song Dynasty city walls. The city walls were built in 1230, extending from the east to west, curved along the watercourse of the Jingjiang River of the Song Dynasty. The under section of the walls is 31.5 meters in length and 7.2 to 7.6 meters in width. The exterior of the city walls was built with stone slabs, crisscross arranged layer by layer, while the inner part filled with rammed earth and gravels. Though centuries has passed, the time-honored city has held on to its vibrant and vigorous prosperity. Generally speaking, many young Chinese prefer heading to large urban centers like Beijing and Shanghai to pursue their career. But Quanzhou has also attracted many young people with its profound history and culture. And next to the Deji Gate is the Tianhou Temple. 
It is the representative component reflecting the institutional guarantee of Asian Chuanzhou as the World Maritime Trade Emporium. So let's take a closer look at the temple. It still remains the architectural style like Mingnan style. The temple bears witness to the formation and development of Mazu belief amidst maritime trade and reveals how folk beliefs and the will of the state worked in concert to advance maritime trade. The temple is located on the southern end of the ancient city of Quanzhou, facing the Jinjiang River and the coastal ports to the south. And here is the entrance to the inner part of the temple. The temple is dedicated to the worship of Ma Zhu, the sea goddess of Quanzhou and is a major center for the dissemination of Mazu belief around the world. Tianhou Temple was first built in 1196, originally known as Shunji Temple, as both government bureaucrats and regular citizens in the successive dynasties held Mazu in high reverence. The temple steadily developed and as was well maintained. Its layout with a hall at the front and sleeping quarters at the rear, which was already in place before the 16th century, has been preserved to this day. The extant building complex faces southward, featuring a central Asymmetric courtyard layout as a whole. Standing on the central axis are, from south to north, the main gate, the theatrical stage, the worship courtyard, Tianhou Hall, the bedchamber hall, and the grooming building. The central axis is flanked by the east and west wing rooms, side rooms, and pavilions. These and sidery structures enclose the courtyard. The temple occupies an area of roughly 6,800 square meters. So let's take a, take a look at the Matsu statue. The statue is just located in the center of the main temple. Because of the COVID-19 epidemic, there is not so many travelers or visitors or worshippers come here. In fact, it is the second time that the Quanzhou has applied for the prestigious title. In 2018, China's nomination, historic monuments and sites of the ancient Quanzhou was referred back for a second chance when the committee met in Baran in 2018. Since then, China made significant technical adjustments and resubmitted the application as Quanzhou Emporium of the World in Songyuan, China, with the former 16 sites included in the serial nomination expanded to 22 sites.
It is not only a joyful event for about 8.78 million people of Changzhou, but also a greater occasion for all Chinese. It is also a blessing for people of the world who cherish historical and cultural heritage and love maritime civilization. The maritime trade tradition, which cherishes inclusiveness, diversity, and common prosperity, has turned ancient Tranzhou into a focal point for commerce and melting pot for diverse cultures. And this wall picture can be dated back to the Qing Dynasty and is still well preserved to today. In ancient times, people of different religious beliefs gathered and lived in harmony in Quanzhou, leaving many religious relics and cultural legacies, such as mosques and temples. Dumb the museum of the world's religions, Quanzhou city today still boasts venues of at least four different religions and beliefs. Quanzhou serial sites have helped display the splendid history of exchanges and mutual learning between the Chinese civilization and world. While spreading to the world ancient China's agricultural technologies, literary, classics and philosophical thoughts via maritime commerce and trade, the city also learned from other cultures and provided available space where different cultures and religions can coexist and integrate. The spirit of inclusiveness and common prosperity embodied by the ancient Chinese city runs in a similar vein with the country's current pursuit of a shared future for all. The international community congratulated China on Quanzhou's inscription onto the World Heritage List and applauded the country's efforts to preserve the relics in a city full of cultural vim and economic vibrancy. It reflects great recognition from the World Heritage Committee on Quanzhou's outstanding universal value as a window for economic and cultural exchanges, a major port along the Maritime Silk Road, as well as a global maritime trade center back in the Song and Yuan dynasties. It also demonstrated that the international community highly affirmed the significance and historical value of Quanzhou in promoting mutual learning, sustainable development, and building a community with a shared future for humanity. The serial property and its component parts demonstrate a high degree of integrity and authenticity. Among all the 22 component sites, 18 are state priority protected sites, four protected sites at the provincial level. Owned by the state, all the component sites are under the protection of the law of the People's Republic of China on the protection of cultural relics. The regulation for the implementation of the law of the People's Republic of China on the protection of cultural relics and the regulation of Fujian province for the protection and management of cultural heritage, etc. Based on the country's administrative mechanism of cultural heritage, a four level administrative framework incorporating administrative bodies at national, provincial, city, county, and site levels has been established to exercise localized protection and management of the nominated property in accordance with different levels of responsibility. A mechanism of coordinated management has been established at municipal level, including management measures and implementation plans such as conservation of integrity and their links value research, overall presentation and interpretation, systematic monitoring, public communication of heritage value. The local government provides sufficient fund, manpower and technical support for heritage conservation and management so that the authenticity and integrity of Changzhou's serial property and these component sites can be fully and properly protected for a long time.
the Chinese government pledged to ramp up efforts and deepen international cooperation to better protect and manage the world heritage in China. Since the accession of the World Heritage Committee, China has always worked closely with other state parties and relevant international organizations to preserve and inherit the collective treasure of humanity. In the future, China will continuously keep its commitment to and take more responsibility for world cultural heritage by enhancing the conservation, conversation, management and international cooperation. China is committed to working with UNESCO, state parties to the World Heritage Committee, and professional advisory bodies to promote international exchanges and cooperation in world heritage protection and proper use while making new and greater contributions to the noble cause. This is all for today's Xinhua Live. If you like our show, please share it with your friends on Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. You can also follow us on social network or subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next time.